Hey guys, I'm Nino King bringing you the ending of Space Quest 3. You may remember that last time we finally found the three guys from Andromeda deep within the offices of the Scumsoft software company on Pestilon, which is what we've been trying to do for the last episode and a half, because there's nothing better to do here. But I couldn't find a way to cross the bridge. Well, right there we notice those panels of buttons next to some of the other doors, so maybe I've got one next to my door, too. Indeed, next to each door. So I'll just go and push the button. And for once, the game doesn't make me walk to the button myself. Partly because you can't. Bridge looks safe. Let's go ahead and see what these two guys are up to. Well, they don't seem to be dead yet, which is good. I'll just get them out of that jello. Alright, fine. I've got another way to get rid of lime jello. So they, they weren't even imprisoned when they wrote the message, so what, what the heck was that all about? They just really didn't like it here? Oh well. Anyway, I only missed one point, it seems. But... Not a whole lot of ways off this platform. Eh, nothing creative about that message. And I can't even talk to the guys. I don't know what's up with that. And it's given me the help screen. I hit the boss key for no real reason, just something to do. Less than an hour to get to this point, when you uh, cut out all the miscellaneous deaths and multiple paths and stuff. It's not too bad. Oh, these are the guys talking again. I'm beginning to think an escape plan would have been a good idea. Oh, hey, it's Elmo. Admittedly, janitor isn't too much of a stretch for Roger. I will say I'm not exactly an expert on the subject, but I think this rescue could possibly have gone better. Hey, I just lost 199 points. I was one point away. Oh, oh wait, I, I know this puzzle. Uh, you've got turned into a plant, and this is where you have to take the antidote. No, wait, that's a different game. Now normally you guys know that I've been cutting out save and load screens, but this time I'm going to show you the save screen so you know when is a good time to save. Right here. Because once that thing settles into the ground, you can't save. Now we get to fight in Nukem Dukem Robots.
it's actually a pretty cool game, and a heck of a lot of fun, particularly when you consider it's just a little mini-game within a graphic adventure. To be honest, I had no idea that Elmo went on talking this long. I always used to just hit enter during his first speech bubble. So he actually bothers to explain what's going on, and saves me a bit of effort, I suppose. And then after taking way, way too long to say let the game begin, he finally shuts up. So the instructions are at the bottom, and you can't save at this point. I try a couple seconds here, and... It's another one of those no-save portions, so let's see what I can do. The first time I decided not to use the guaranteed win strategy and instead spent a little bit of time trying to step on the two guys just to see if I could do it. And then figured I'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Elmo and see how I can do in a straight-up fight. So... There's a lot of different strategies you can use. You can try to just outrun him, and every time he punches, he'll lose a bunch of energy. You can try to make him run out. You can attempt to anticipate his punching and block. Blocking uses energy if you don't get punched, but if you do, then you make that energy back. Or you can actually try to duke it out and punch him. Punching him successfully will restore your energy, but if he blocks, or if you miss, then you lose quite a bit. And I'm a bit ahead here, so I could probably use a uh, chicken strategy at this point, just run away. But that would be kind of insulting to chickens, and having played enough Zelda games, I certainly don't want to insult chickens. So he's almost dead, his energy bar is blinking. But in this game, it's not too hard to make a comeback quickly. And of course, I'm not really expecting to win, even though I'm still way ahead. And Stop dancing out of the way of my punches, you nerd freak! And then he just gets up and bounces right into them. One more blocked punch, and that's it for Elmo. Beat it on my first try, and totally didn't intend that. But oh well. 100 points, and let's see what the rest of the game looks like. Of course, they broke through the wrong wall of the arena. He's supposed to break through the right wall, but if you beat him up on the left, he falls to the left wall, and then you escape to the right. That's not interesting. It's just a little thing that they point out online. And now I've pointed it out. Well, that's what happens if you decide to be a subversive and go over the head of your company president. Well, speak of the devil. Looks like we got attack fighters coming. So, we'd better get out of here. Lightspeed non-functional? What the? Alright, so without light speed, the only option that we have at this point is... Die, I guess. Well, 
there's a game over we haven't seen since the beginning of the game. Alright, so this time let's get this over with quickly. Discover that light speed is non functional and we're trapped in Sector 69. Pretty sure they did that intentionally. So let's see what's wrong with it. And yeah, I know you guys want to see what, Mar what uh, Scott there is saying, and I, I'm going to let him finish, but I wanted to make sure the game was paused because those fighters are catching up to us. I also don't imagine the games were really 60 bucks back then, were they? In a game like this? Alright, so the reactor's good. Landing gear, probably not interfering with our light speed. So the warp motivator is also functioning properly. We're not in good shape. We can't do light speed. There is a problem. You are a useless diagnostic computer. But once again, we don't really have time to yell at the game. We've got to get on with fighting off these attack fighters. So first you got to make sure to go into attack speed and then pull up the weapon system. Put up the rear shield. And now we wait. So switch to front shield while you're tracking the enemy fighter and move the crosshair over it and shoot it down. Fail to have your front shields up and that guy kills you. Then switch back to the rear shield because the next one's going to be coming from behind. And the pattern will simply repeat itself over and over until you've killed five of the enemy ships. It's not really difficult, but I understand that if you're not in attack speed, it's impossible. because the enemy ship will just fly away before you can get a lock on. And if you miss more than about one or two of them, then your shield energy will run out, and you'll die. Also not really something that I wanted to try to cram into this video, so... That'll be good for the bonus video if it's actually at all interesting. This guy is a little tenacious, but eventually you catch up with him. But I've never had trouble locking onto them. Eventually they'll just randomly wander into your crosshairs, and as soon as they do, you hit the space bar and it's all over. As you saw a couple ships ago, I don't think you even need to wait for it to get to the middle. Your shots can just go off into empty space, and you still kill them. And finally we've fought them off. And of course, that's worth 100 points, which means I got a full score once I realize I need to get out of the weapon system. So, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the end of the game. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Thanks for waiting until after I fought off the enemy fleet before you fixed that. Now, that doesn't make any sense. I can't put my ship into light speed until after I've set the course. Cutscene logic.
if they could cut the engines to some light speed at will, why didn't they do that before? My landing gear is blue. Hey, it's Ken Williams making his third cameo appearance in the series. Now, I don't really know how much of that is true. Obviously, there hasn't been a new Space Quest game in, well, pretty much forever. And Mark Crow left the series after Space Quest 4, I believe, but... I haven't really read up on what they've been doing since. And there we go. That's Space Quest 3. We're gonna pick up nowhere even remotely close to that in the next game. But of course, we got credits. And this time they're joke credits. Mostly. And a nice rendition of some of the themes from the game that we love so much. Sierra Talking Bear obviously was around even way back then. And the Monolith Burger theme. We will be hearing more of that, not just because it's the same motif as used for the main theme of this game. And keep an ear out, because it's going to transition back to the main theme again. You can hear that it is pretty much the same tune. Just repeat. So with that out of the way, let's go back and take another look at the giant robot combat. Because I wanted to show you a slightly easier way if you're not skilled enough like I was to fight your way through it. First though, I do want to purposefully die once just to show you what it looks like. I'm trying to step on the two guys just to see if I can squash them because... Elmo warned me about that. I'm pretty sure it's impossible, because as you'll see coming up in just a few seconds, they run right under the feet of the robots and don't get squished. So, they're just a set piece. And it's around this time that I realize all I really need to do is just start punching the air, and eventually I'll die. I have no idea why my blood is spreading across the arena floor because my robot ran out of power. What does it say, Evangelion? Alright, 
Alright, so now, attempting to win. Like I said, the turtle strategy, or the chicken strategy, are pretty effective. If you can keep him punching, he's going to use a lot of his energy. And the key is to look at his front-facing sprite. Both of these robots use their... Yeah, I don't know what was going on there. The first half of the fight, I was punching at him, hitting him, and doing no damage. But the key is to stay out of his punching range, which is below him and to the right. He'll just keep punching at you and won't be able to hit you. Problem is, if you're going to wait him out, you've got to make sure that you have enough energy to survive until he runs out. If you don't, it gets bad. So, you can either stay below him and to the right, and just keep moving to the right as he does, or you can keep him above you and to the right, and just remember to stop moving up before he gets out of the way, which is what I failed to do there. Every time that he walks to the left to try and get in front of you so he can punch you, you just punch him before he can turn and land a punch. And of course, if he tries to get to the right side of you, you just have to move out of the way. So this time I was trying the same strategy again. It wasn't really working all that well. And he just kind of drifts to the right. And then he gets into position and starts wailing on me again. Not really all that impressive, so I'm just going to trade blows for a while. See, this is what Nukem Dukem Robots is supposed to look like. But eventually I wanted to try the strategy again, because I really do want to show you how to win if you're not really good at this robot combat stuff, because this is one of the hardest parts of the series to get through if you don't know what you're doing. Or if you're like me and trying to show something off that isn't working. So I go to the bottom right, where hopefully he can't move down to get a good beat on me from the side, and then suddenly he glitches into the wall here. I didn't know this was possible until I started doing this LP, but he's not going to do anything at this point, and if you just sit here and wait, he will actually die without trying to do anything else. So I guess that's another way you can do it. And that was Space Quest 3. Like I said before, I'll see you guys next time for Space Quest 4.